What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Debrunsky here. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a brief overview of the brand new Fenzon for patch 2.4 PTR. Now I'm going to be entirely honest, my initial impressions after messing around with this build a little bit before making this video is it has been greatly improved. I would almost go on a limb and saying with the new temporary nerf to IS and shapeshifting breakpoints, which that might be changed in PTR, but if it is not changed, I think that the Fenzon is now probably the second best melee character behind the Zealer. Again, I'm not a big fan of the Barbarian, but this build has been greatly improved and that is largely because of the massive 100% increase IS has been added to the skill Fend. So pairing that with good damage and not being locked out by the dodge, avoid, and evade anima animations, excuse me, which used to be a previous issue with this build, it is now a lot more viable. So the combination of Jab and Fend makes this a very powerful character. I think I have upwards of about 12k damage, so that's pretty cool. And also, the best weapon choice is not Grief with this build, so that is very interesting as well. So I'll do a quick overview of the attributes. So I just went basically a max vitality build, so enough strength to equip my gear with a little bit more, and then dexterity, again enough to equip the spear that I'm using, and then everything else in vitality. So I have 12k fend damage for the Might Aura kicks in for my Mercenary. So that's pretty impressive and a decent attack rating bonus there. So we're at about 12k with Fend. So that's not horrible. It's not amazing at the same time, but it's pretty good. Now for the skill tree, I personally went with, and again, I haven't optimally tested out this build, but for the Javelin and Spear skill tree, I put 20 hard points into Jab and then 20 hard points into Fend. Now I'm going to demonstrate in a little bit, but Fend's kind of interesting skill like it says here it attacks all adjacent targets until the maximum level is reached so that's the maximum amount of strikes but if you go to use it on a single target it's not like zeal where zeal will strike five times at a single target fend will only strike once at a single target so that's why i put 20 hard points at a jab so i basically i jab single target monsters and then i fend when i'm kind of surrounded by a lot of monsters that's why i went that route for bow and crossbow i put nothing and then for the passive magic seal tree, I put 20 air points into critical strike and then 20 air points into penetrate. It's kind of funny, I bows on build, especially faith with the ignore target defense. I typically only invest one hard point into penetrate to unlock pierce. It's kind of weird seeing the skill tree set up where I've maxed penetrate and haven't put anything into pierce. And then at that point, I put one hard point into the dodge, avoid, and evade animations here. Those skills don't lock you out like they used to, so that's a big improvement. And then I put 20 hard points into Valkyrie. Whatever I had left over was put into Decoy for more life. So I don't think that the Valk does a crap load of damage, but she is kind of a nice meat shield. I do want to quickly show off the differences here between the Fend and Jab animations and when to use them. And then we'll do a Chaos Sanctuary run and I'll show off the gear too, but. So buff up with Battle Lord, Battle Command, and then buff up again. Just to make sure the Valkyrie has maximum life. So I'll find a single target here. So if I use... Just strikes once. That was Fen, but if I clump up some monsters together... Right here. That's when it strikes multiple targets. So again, that's why like a single target here, I'll just use Jab instead. I think personally the Jab works a lot better than Impale. Impale is a lot of damage, but it strikes pretty slow. Maybe I'll just show you the difference between Jab. That's Impale. This is Jab. I just think it works better for a single target. Now for the gear, I am using a very high-end setup, and that's just because I want to kind of showcase players 1, 3, and players 8 in the Chaos Sanctuary and kind of show endgame. I think it's vastly improved. But there's definitely some more budget options, like if you had a Ethereal Ethone Sedan, you put three Shale Runes in it, and then you ran G-Face, Duress, String of Ears, Raven Frost, a Dual Leech Ring, Lang Hands, Gore Rider Boots, that's all kind of standard melee stuff that's not too expensive. It will perform very well. Maybe in the future I'll make a budget-oriented build. This is just, again, kind of like top-tier gear. So, the coolest thing about this build is it's not centered around Grief. Need to use a spear weapon for the spears on so i am using breath of the dying and a matriarchal pike so i get additional javelin and spear skills and then all the other really nice stuff from breath of the dying like the is enhanced damage dual leech all that stuff 
Paired that with G-Face, My Lords, Fortitude, String of Ears, Dual Leech Ring, Raven Frost, Slaying Hands, and Gorider Boots. So again, this is expensive gear, but if you were to use Ethone Sedan, Triple Shales, and Duress, you had you could have a very similar setup. So I think that's cool that this would be a viable budget build. And the offhand CT and Spirit. Inventory is different, max damage, attack rating, plus life, grand charm, small charms, and then I have a torch and annie. Then I'm using a fortitude, G face, Reaper's Toll setup with a Might or a Mercenary to again boost our damage. But we'll do players one, River of Flame, and then we'll partway through go to P3. And then we'll jump all the way up to players eight to kind of wrap up the chaos run. The P1. Like you'd expect for a melee build. Pretty good clear speed. I do kind of to an extent wish that Fen worked like Zeal. Because you won't get the full amount of strikes if you're not surrounded. That's kind of like the only downside of the build, but I guess they wanted to make it work a little bit different than Zeal. You just alternate back and forth between Jab and Fend. I mean, almost 3k life. Mercenary hasn't really even had a chance to proc the crep yet because everything's just kind of dying so fast. You could maybe get into, like, casting slow missiles and stuff like that for the Chaos Sanctuary. It could be an option if you wanted to. Might work good to, like, toggle back and forth with the Oblivion Knights. The only thing is just being decrept in the Chaos Sanctuary kind of nerfs you a little bit. Once we get to the seal, we'll go to P3, and then we'll do two of the bosses at P3. And then we'll do a player's eight Factor, and then just do a player's eight Diablo. But this build is so much better than what the previous Fenzon used to be. And I just like the fact that it's not a build that revolves around grief either. I think that's pretty cool. And it's kind of an interesting build too because just like the way that Fen works, you really need to make sure that you're like running up to as many clusters of monsters as you can or you don't get that like full amount of strikes. So I do think that's kind of cool. And then just single target jab, guys like that. So now we'll go up to P3. These guys will still be P3 or P1, but Grand Vizier will be P3. And we haven't really even had close to a close call either. Amazon has really good return for life. Jumping up to P3, I'm, I'm decrept now, so I'm a little bit slow, but basically the undead clear speed is the same. Venom Lords are a little bit slower. I think Fend is only got 350% damage. So it's not even that massive of a damage bonus either. I thought it might be a good idea there. Cast the Valkyrie. The only thing is, it's like, it's kind of standard 
standard melee stuff. No teleports, kind of slogging around. I mean, I could use an Enigma. But I did want to kind of show off Fortitude setup. Go to P8. Vector. I mean, there's not really much of a difference between P3 and P8. Like, for melee, that was... That was a pretty good... player of Infector, I think. Well, I think it is, it is a little awkward, the skill. Like, you really need to, like, get up and make sure you're surrounded so that you're getting the full strikes from Fen, but... That was a pretty powerful player's 8. Fen. And then we'll just use Jab on Diablo. So yeah, guys, that's the Fenzon. I do think that some of the changes they made have been pretty substantial. Like, not having the dodge, avoid, and evade interrupt when you're using Fen, that's really good. And then you cast a very powerful summon whenever you want to as a meat shield. You have the attack rating bonus from Penetrate. And then overall, pretty good damage. You have 350% damage bonus from Fen. And you have the Jab. Jab's more attack rating than damage, but... I mean, 14k from Fend, decent attack rating, lots of plus life, and a really strong Valkyrie, I think, makes the Fenzon better than the Fury Druid in its current state right now. Again, it's kind of tough to match anything that's like the Zealer with Holy Shield. But that wraps up this video, guys. Just a quick overview of the Fenzon. I do think that, like I mentioned with budget gear, like Triple Shield, Ethel and Sedan, Duress, everything else here is not too expensive. The inventory is, but I think you could still rock a viable melee build. I mean, melee is always going to be behind casters. It's kind of the way it is in Diablo 2 unless they do some massive changes, but it's been largely improved. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree or disagree, or if you think you'll probably never rock this build, but it's definitely been improved quite a bit. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.